Just by way of a brief background, I think you all know Bill Gonsolo, but uh, uh, as Bill told me a couple of days ago, he's a, a regular Fall River boy. Uh, and I think that's probably true. Uh, he's been a lifelong resident of uh, Fall River. He's been a, been a member of the Fall River Historical Society. Uh, he graduated uh, from Connolly. He attended uh, the U University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth and received his degree in English uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from that department. And then uh, received a, a master's degree in writing from the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. Um, and uh, not, not only did uh, uh, Bill go to Connolly, as, as I recall, he did go to Connolly, uh, but uh, he also taught at Connolly for a while uh, before joining the faculty at uh, Diamond Vocational. So, uh, uh, Bill. I'll turn everything over to you at this point, and uh, we're looking forward to a, an excellent lecture. Hi, everyone. Oh, professional writing. I wish I had my degree in professional public speaking. Uh, <laughs> Always uh, intimidating to be here, but uh, always uh, very grateful, too, that people still turn out for, for history. Um, I, I was just telling Stephanie over there and Dennis, I, I wish we had more young people here. But what are we going to do? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stephanie was quick to point out that you have more money than the young people, so <laughs> don't be afraid to join. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So, okay, um, get outside my comfort zone a little bit for this one. Um, I, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, history and historians and what, who, who's a historian? Um, I, I don't know when I, I crossed the line and become a historian. I know I like to research history and I know I like local history. Um, rocks, landmarks. Mostly a private kind of passion, you know, going out, looking at, researching some. Um, and this is the first time that I'm going to kind of share it with people. Um, I go back home, I look in my filing cabinet at home, and I have tons of projects. I'm a very good researcher. Uh, I'm a bad publisher. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, you know, I even fail to present. So, But we're going to give it a shot tonight. Um, Fall River Rock, Landmarks, Stones, and Stories. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how, many, how many of you are familiar with the Phillips three-volume history of uh, Fall River? Yeah, a, a, a few here, right? Um, I, I have been inspired by it. Uh, it. It's the most comprehensive history of the city, I think. Um, and the part that I like especially is uh, the last part of the last volume that is, um, it denotes different landmarks, localities, streams, springs, rocks, uh, all located within Fall River or nearby. And uh, even when I was young, when I had first found out about this book, one of the things I always liked to do was to try to go to these locations. Um, I can remember being um, a young guy playing basketball at Ruggles Park, and um, <laughs> you had two choices on a hot day. Um, you, you, you'd play hoop, and you, if it was very hot, you could walk all the way down from the basketball court all the way down to the fountain at the end of the park. Or, if you're a little bit more ambitious, you would hop the wall outside the court, just walk down the hill, and drink from the spring that was down there. And it was a spring that was supposedly, it was noted uh, by Native Americans to have some magical healing powers. And uh, I can remember reading about this and going, like, wow, this is amazing. And so it's become my pastime. And so for that, I just wanted to mention, though, the fact that I learned about that from uh, Philip's book, in Philip's History of Fall River. And he was, uh, Phillips, uh, Arthur Sherman Phillips, is a true Renaissance man. He, um, besides writing you know, an incredible history book, uh, Steph, what was his noteworthy claim to fame? Lizzie Borden. He was, what, the youngest, youngest member of the legal team that successfully defended Lizzie Borden. When he died, in fact, he was the last surviving member. 
So you have a man who is a practicing lawyer who also writes comprehensive history. What's a historian? <laughs> Truly. <laughs> um, what, what is less known, and what I, I've come in touch with a little bit more, is that, and, and, and you learn every day, Phillips has this three-volume book of history uh, that was published in 1941. And um, regrettably, he, he was dead. He was dead. He had died. Uh, his ver first volume was complete and published after his death. His second volume was tidied up and assembled by this man, Norman Easton. And um, the third volume, which was really in this, this uh, I, I, not even book form, um, was pulled together and published by Easton as well. And so by the end of the third volume, he calls himself a co-author, a co-author. Um, he, was, he was an interesting guy. Um, while Phillips had this broad knowledge, and truly he wrote about every aspect of Fall River culture, ecclesiastical history, localities, he, he, just you name it, business, he wrote about everything. Uh, Norm Easton was uh, a bit more of a natural history guy, and his uh, primary publishing is this, uh, and I hope I can even say it, a list of coleoptera collected within 10 miles of Fall River, Massachusetts. Beetles. He listed a thousand and nine beetles. <laughs> I just find that amazing. What, what kind of guy could just focus like that? <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to give him a shout out because he does come into some of the, um, the, in the last volume of the book, the place where we learn a lot about landmarks and rocks and streams. It was primarily written by this guy. And as you look at the volumes and you, and you read it, you'll see that a lot of him comes out in it. And so I just want to give him a little shout out. He doesn't get the credit much. OK, how can we avoid talking about rolling rock? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, mostly I'm going to follow their book with different localities in, in landmarks uh, that they picked out. And this is one of the first ones. And in fact, I take this first picture from their book in Rolling Rock. I think most of us know where this is, Easton Avon County Street. <clears throat> Here's a more contemporary picture. Has anybody here almost forgotten that it's there, this 140-ton rock? <laughs> you just drive by, oh yeah, there's a giant rock there. Um, I'm going to shine it up a little bit here. I was amazed in reading some of the histories about it that the rock was deposited by fluvial action. Now, I'm not a Latin student, but I have some idea that fluvial has to do with water. And you take one look at the rolling rock and you say, well, how the heck was that moved by water? Early geologists figured that it either came from the area in Somerset and Swansea or as far away as Boston. Fluvial, can you imagine that stream? Um, some people would say that it might have been glacial fluvial, which means that it was carried by, you know, the water that's contained in glacial ice. Um, still, still amazing. Um, pudding stone conglomerate. I, I have this quote here, like rolling up snow to make a snowman. Do, do, do you know what that describes, that the process of making a conglomerate pudding stone rock? I don't know where I got it from. I, I put it, I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. um, putting stone conglomerate. Uh, this is the entry from, from the book, and um, if I have a shortcoming in presentations, I have no problem putting up boxes of text for you to read. And I know this is a little small, but I like um, what these gentlemen wrote. And the references, other things, that's, that's my meat and potatoes. That's what I like to, to look into a little bit here. Um, this final report on the geology of Massachusetts, published in 1841. Fall River was already on the map for this, this rock. Um, I love this notation. Uh, in the margin of the volume consulted, the editor found the following in his grandfather's handwriting placed there about 1860. The vandals have done their work in the great boulder rocks no more. Rocks no more. Well, right off the bat, I want to find this book. 
I want to I want to see if I can get this book. And in fact, this book is available uh, through Google. Google has digitized it, and you can read this book from 1841 about rocks throughout Massachusetts. What you can't do, and where the historical society comes in, is you can get the actual copy. And I'll let you I'll let you look at this, you know, kind of quickly. And you can see this great little picture of the uh, the rolling rock there and the guy moving it with one hand, which notoriously you used to be able to do. Uh, but do you see the side note? This is the exact same book that was referenced when the history book was written. And the Historical Society is able to keep a hold of that. I saw some discussion online the other day. Some people were, it was a woman from North Carolina who wanted to um, she had some historical material and she wanted to, to give it back to the city. And there was a little bit of a debate about who to give it to. And somebody came in and said, like, oh, don't give it to the historical society. They get enough stuff. <laughs> you, you know, and when you, you bite your tongue instead of somebody else's, kind of. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I held back. But what I wanted to say was that when you need that thing, you know where to go. Of course, you know, it costs money. You have to, you know, you have to donate. My, uh, my giving for the Historical Society this year will be for the, um, the archives, because I think it's amazing. And I'll, and I'll have some great archival material that I will share with you. Um, try to find a picture of um, Norm Easton somewhere. The only place you're going to get it? Historical Society. <clears throat> anyway, love this picture of Rolling Rock. Um, I had somebody mention to me the other day that, like, oh, you're giving a talk? I said, yeah, I'm going to be talking about rocks. They go, oh, rolling rock? I said, yep, yep, <laughs> just name a rock, right? <laughs> she said, oh, I always had this question. She said, how did they get that big rock up there? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the picture kind of explains that they didn't get the big rock up there. They took the what? the bedrock away around it so that it rests on a pedestal. This was fairly common. Uh-oh. It's not mine, right? <clears throat> One of the things that I always thought was kind of interesting about the rock, and I, I always want the quirky detail. I mean, you, you know, you can look at that. You can find, you know, 140 tons of circumference. It's a big rock. When you, you could push it with one hand, it would oscillate and move a couple inches at the top. It's truly really amazing. Uh, but there are other balancing rocks and rolling rocks throughout the state. They don't call them rolling rock. They call them, you know, balancing boulders or something like that. Um, I love in Fenner's history of Fall River, it talked about the rock. It said, in the old bounds, the rock is referred to as goose nesting rock. Goose nesting rock. Is your playground like of a mind like mine that just when I hear that, what's the first thing I think of? There's a goose on top of that rock at one point, right? And so my, my question is, what do geese, <laughs> oddly enough, geese do like to get in elevated spots. Um, in fact, they're not very discriminate at all. <laughs> there was a nice little news story here, a woman on the ninth floor of her apartment building. Uh, the, Goose landed in there and had the little chicks there. She was, oh, she was just thrilled. But just, just a little odd, just a little odd. In Canada, they're very nice to the geese. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it seems to me that there is, um, there's certainly some sense with um, probably calling a goose nesting rock. And of course, these names sort of change. Um, this picture, I wish I could say where I got it from. Uh, I see these things. I, I do a lot of research online. And I saved this, and I did not know where I got it from. If it's your picture, you can come down and kick me in the shins later. But um, I love this photo. It's, it shows the men. So we have the rock, obviously. And what's going on is the right is apparently the beginnings of what? It's going to take place on the other side of it? What a quarry. quarry. There's going to be a quarry over there. Uh, we all know that Fall River is loaded with granite, and they start a quarry right over here. And we get a better view of it right here. Now, this picture came from the Historical Society. They allowed me to use this several years ago when I wrote an article uh, for the Spirit uh, newspaper on this. 
and another reason to keep a historical society around so you can go and get pictures and get permission. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, if I had to work in that quarry, I might have a little bit of con concern. Uh, the rock seems to be hanging a little bit precariously. They might have cut that wall back a little bit more. Just, uh, just a little headroom, right? Um, quarries, let me see, deep, the rock's high. Uh, they use dynamite a lot to, yeah, to split, yeah. So we, we might have some problems brewing here. Uh, <coughs> funny, uh, I was showing this picture to my son John. My son John said, he goes, I didn't know there was a, like a pond up there. And uh, quarries notoriously do what? Fill with water. They fill with water. In fact, a lot of time quarrying was spent pumping water out of quarries. Uh, of course, we see the other, you know, we see um, County Street going up right beside it. <coughs> Not everybody loved the rock. Now, you, you know, obviously the people in the quarry weren't so happy about it. Uh, the story goes, I, I believe the quarry was Harrison Quarry. I'm not sure if I heard Cary Quarry, too. Um, but because every time they would blast, the rock would move so much that they went and put um, some wedges underneath it. They uh, first, uh, what is the, the thing? That they used to split the granite. I'm forgetting the term for it. Um, it was a metal pin. They would put it underneath, and then they put little chips under there to keep the rock from rolling. And that's why the rock didn't roll anymore. It was, it was a bit about safety. It wasn't you know, so vandalous, but I mean, it was the rolling rock. People knew it for that, so <sighs> kind, of, kind of unfortunate. Um, and this is where the story gets a little bit rich. Um, so as early as the 1860s, they was having debate about the rock, but by 1911, and I, I got this from Phil Sylvia's book and from another story by uh, Ken Chaplin, um, People were arguing about it. And a property owner who was next to the rock um, really wanted it out of there. By this time, the quarry, I guess, had been filled in. And people were trying to use, um, you know, use the land. And there was a little concern that this rock was hanging over its property. And uh, this alderman, uh, Richard, uh, Richard William McGee, uh, said that he felt that they didn't have to move the rock, but they could just break off that part of it that <laughs> would hang over the property. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit mortified in saying this. Uh, Richard William McGee happens to be my great-grandfather. <laughs> yes, as I am up here talking about the beauty of Fall River's rocks, uh, Richard William, and, and I can attest to the pig-headed Irish side of our family, <laughs> was doggedly trying to chip off four feet of rock from the rolling rock. <laughs> The debate was finally settled. Um, I, I love this line here. You know, Fall River has not so many historical pieces that it can afford to shatter them. Right? And it did say something about it. You know, in, in Fall River, you know, our legacy has always been blue collar. Um, we work. We work. Um, it drives me crazy. I hear people complaining about the city's motto. Right? We'll try. I'm like, you don't say it like that. You say, we'll try, right? We work, we work, right? But sometimes, did we ever forget about art? Did we have, yeah, a little bit. Thank God for like the Forever School of Painting. Um, J. Edmund Estes, who ultimately saves the rock, buys the land, donates it to the city. He was someone who understood this too. And in fact, if you go to the Fall River Public Library, uh, there's a whole Estes collection where he collected all Fall River authors and turn them into the library. And, and he said that, he said, we don't have so many authors here, we should have more, and we should keep track of them. So, anyway, by 1930, uh, it becomes a city park, and the Rolling Rock is saved. Uh, I guess the city had a su uh, subscription service, they actually created the park, he gave the land, they created the park, and the rock is eternally there. I took some slides out here. You know what I think about with this rock? I, I, I'm just a nerd with this stuff. Do you know County Street was an in Indian path? That a lot of Route 6, believe it or not, if you trace Route 6, a lot of that is a Native American path. And you think of it as it comes up through the city and you follow what would be Bedford Street, 
And then you take that crazy right to get on Quarry, the old, the old road out, and then they used to head up by County Street. Why did they head up by County Street? Why didn't they just go by Pleasant Street? Right? You know, Pleasant Street wasn't there, right? But I mean, it was a path, right? Why did they go up that way? One, Rolling Rock is pretty high. Two, it is truly a landmark. You get a walk there, you need something to show you where you're going. If you've ever been lost in the woods and around here, deciduous forest, everything looks the same. You get a big rock like that, you know where you are. And more than that, if you get the little Native Americans with you, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, roll the rock. <laughs> you ever hear the, the, the story that they said that Native Americans, this one's kind of crazy. They used to uh, drag people under there and they would put their arm under the edge of the rock and they would, to punish them, they would roll the rock. <laughs> I, I've seen some films of cops trying to put guys in handcuffs. <laughs> How the heck do you drag somebody under a rock and say, I'm not holding them, <laughs> you know? Just crazy. <sighs> Creeping rock. Anybody familiar with this one? One, oh, I, I should know you would be. <laughs> Creeping rock. Um, <laughs> it's in somebody's yard, yes. Highland Ave, right near Wilson Road. Uh, they just cleaned it up recently. Yep, yep. It's a uh, funny, funny story with that. I was surprised to find out about it. So uh, Creeping Rock, Highland Ave, near Wilson Road. Uh, Phillips History. Uh, a conglomerate boulder, again, it looks like you, you took a bunch of little rocks and put them in cement and squeezed them all together. And it was a big boulder and it split. And it split. I just, I mean, this happens, this happens all the time. Um, rocks, they get water in them, you know, it freezes, it expands, it cracks, it cracks, it cracks, and pretty soon it splits. Well, this one split and moved, obviously, quite far away from each other. Things that make you go, hmm. Right? Things that make you go, hmm. <clears throat> Within the memory of the editor, and this again, this guy, Norm Easton. Norm Easton put this book together um, with the author, the guy who wanted to do it, was actually dead. And he was, he had talked to him, he knew what he wanted, but he was putting a lot of himself in there too. And he said uh, the two sections in his memory were separated by not more than three feet. Three feet. Uh, the book was published in 1941. He was born in, I think, 1872. So that's a lot of movement for a rock. Here it is today. <laughs> you know, talk about rock movement. Look at that section on the left. Does anybody want to tell Mr. Prue, who owns the property now, to maybe plant some grass over there? <laughs> You don't want that dirt to get washed away or we're going to have a half of a creeping rock that's going to creep into the middle of Highland Avenue. So um, the Prue family, uh, they, they, they bought the house. Uh, they did a good job cleaning up. Uh, th this was really, really, um, really grown over. I was there in 2007 and interviewed the former owner, Winnie Dimmick, who um, I have an audio recording of her talking about it. She's, she's just great. Um, but they, they've cleaned it up a bit. This is from inside their yard, and this is, um, I, I can't see my little arrow here. So the big part is one half, and on the, on the right of that is the other half that's sort of moving away down the hill. A uh, little perspective here. This is a big rock. Now, I could have cheated. I had a picture of little Carter there all by himself, and the rock looked immense because he's so little. But I had to include Veronica Prue in there. Veronica Prue, of all things, was one of my former students. And uh, her name was, unmarried, Gonsolo. And so I would routinely call her my daughter. And you know, she's just a, a wonderful kid. And so I'm preparing for this. I'm looking through property records. And I want to talk to see if Winnie Dimmick still has the property. And I look. And Veronica Prue is down there, is owning it. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, are you kidding me? So I, I get in touch with them. I'm like, Veronica, I'm like, do you own? She's yes, I own that property now. I'm like, do you know about your rock? She's well, I've got a rock. 
<laughs> I'm like, you don't know anything about it. And she's like, no. And I said, well, I just simply don't believe that Winnie Dimmick did not tell you about that rock. Winnie has such a great story about it. Um, her husband uh, knows a little bit about it, and we, we talked about it. Um, but, you know, moving all around. Now, look, I, I put this shot in there. Um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I was a little bit more fit than I am now. And uh, I played some basketball, but I do not think that I would make that step across those two rocks. That does not look like three feet. That looks more like nine or ten. <laughs> and um, is the rock creeping? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it will if they don't get some grass over there. Uh, this is uh, a picture I took of Winnie with her rock. And the next one, I have an audio file, and I hope you don't mind. It's actually a few minutes long, but Winnie is absolutely eloquent. I tested it on my son, um, who is not very interested in rocks, and he said, well, she's pretty good, so. <laughs> the rock was the thing that sold us the house, and we didn't even own the land it was on at the time. You know, we had first refusal when the owner sold the land, but like most things around this area of Fall River, it was a, a bigger piece of property that was broken up. You know, son took the old, old house, the daughter and her husband built the newer house to the north, and the son thought he had a, a project, and then the Montauk wires went through and sort of disrupted the property. So we had north and south lots, and it took us a while before we actually acquired them. A little different here and there. But we were interested in the rock from, from the first moment. The one, the top of it that faced, is close to the Highland Avenue is actually slanted. You can climb up it, but you can also roll off it. <laughs> I'm a bad interviewer. <laughs> the higher back part uh, has a huge rock chip or slip on the northwest side, and it gives you a foothold to climb up on top of it. And it's beautifully flat, and eight people can have a picnic up there. Really? So we used to send the boys up with their bag lunch and their tea. Uh, hot summer day, and the other thing was we knew it was a landmark, but it took me years before I found out that it actually has the name Creeping Rock. I read it in one of the histories, and that history also says exactly how many feet or yards, you know, Highland Avenue is, and so they used it as, as a kind of a marker or a survey that there are two opinions about creeping rock, about whether it actually creeps. Because it comes to this huge glacial deposit, mm -hmm. and it weathers, and pebbles drop out of it. And there were people still alive when we moved in 46 years ago who said that you could step across or just give a hop across space between them. And the front rock is a little bit lower, so that would give you a, a little more chance to not knock your teeth out. Uh -huh. And other people said, no, no, it isn't moving at all. It's, it's always been a, just a little bit too far except for the bravest guy to jump over. <laughs> so I, I figure that somewhere in the 1700s to the late middle 1900s, uh, people were always debating on whether that rock was actually on a roll. <clears throat> a couple of questions. If you have any, um, if, if you like doing history, you want to start doing history, um, let me give you a little, a little advice here, a painful lesson. Uh, I had a beautiful picture of Winnie Dimmick. And you hear from her interview, right? Winnie is delightful. Um, and I had this beautiful picture, and I published it uh, in the spirit, Far of a Spirit. And I'm sure that I kept a digital copy of it on my computer that my son just updated for me. And I lost a whole hard drive, and I'm still figuring out what's gone. What's gone. Um, lesson for me, lesson for anybody else, if you're going to do this stuff. You know, there's still a real value in printed materials. 
you know, printing up pictures, um, young people walking around, I have a thousand photos on my phone. <laughs> Don't print them all, too expensive, but um, yeah, uh, print, them, print them up a, you know, a little bit. Um, painful lesson here. <clears throat> This, this is one that I had read about, but until I, I started to think about this talk, I had really hadn't been there, hadn't really like fully wrapped my head around it. You know when you read about something, you go like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, but I hadn't done anything. And so as soon as I got out of school this year, um, I, I, I just I started thinking about this. This, this is how I learn. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit kind of like almost frenetic in how I do it. Um, <laughs> we were having a get-together the last day of school. Everybody was going down to, what is uh, that restaurant on the waterfront there? The Cove. Everybody, oh, we're going to the Cove. Going. I couldn't even go. You know where I went? Metacom at Ledge. <laughs> I started going down. It was so close. I said, well, I've got to go. So Metacom at Ledge. Central, and I put Picasso at Anawan Street. You know how those two actually kind of come together? It's, it's a little bit sort of convoluted now because of everything being kind of broken up down there. Um, but they do, they do come together. Uh, boy, this is a lot of reading. Um, but just if you want to glance at it kind of quickly, I'll show you exactly where it is and you're going to go like, oh yeah, I, I know what he's talking about. Um, Foot of the Hill, Central and Anawan. I, I love this geology stuff. Um, it, when, I, when I grow up, I'm going to learn about this stuff. Carboniferous slates. I have no idea what they are. <laughs> I think I found some. I think I found some. In fact, I'll share them with you if you on the way out if you want to see them. Um, I, I, I grabbed some slate. Um, I promised myself I was going to make sure I could pronounce this properly, and I'm not sure that I do. Arcos, Arcos, there's Arcos granite in, in these slates. Um, I'm not sure if I found some of that. Uh, granite quartz, feldspar, horn blend. This is this is uh, the formula for far of a granite, and this idea of rotten rock, rotten rock. And so, I, you know, these are things that just sort of provoke me. It's like, well, I've got to go find the rotten rock here. Uh, they say that the the ledge in uh, Freetown is this type of uh, granite. But anyway, this is the area that we're talking about. And so we have Central Street at the top. You can see that red line going down. And we have Anawan Street, and where it, you can actually see where it kind of joins up with Pocasset, right down near the, um, is, is that the Metacomet Mill? I'm not sure the name. And the ledge is behind it, but not so much of it is visible anymore. Okay, this is, a, I, I, found, I, I don't know where I get this picture from. I found it online, shame on me. Um, but I'm using it because it starts to illustrate a point. Um, we can see here the beginnings. This is probably where the falls were and some of the ledge. Um, I don't know if you can see, this is the old city hall. Is this, is this the granite block building? Yeah. Granite block building? And back here we start to see this ledge. I love doing this stuff. I can look at maps all day. I can look at, oh my god, I love doing this stuff. Um, this was, uh, I found this on Facebook, and shame on me, I, I did not credit it again either. Um, I only grabbed this because it really mirrors another picture that I took. This, of course, is when they're building uh, the, um, the Braga Bridge. You can see in back of it the tower from City Hall. And this is what this area looks like now. Anybody realize that there was still like a ledge down there? Yeah, it's funny, we drive over the bridge, you know, you might run into Workout World, which is right next to it. Um, but you never, you never kind of go back and look. Um, I went back there, really kind of naive. Um, I won't tell you how I got back there and what kind of signs I had to go by to get in, but um, I tell you, there's a way that you don't have to read a single no trespassing sign if you go in by the railroad. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> and wear good shoes. I almost killed myself on this, but, but that makes it all worth it. And so we get on this, these formations, these, these striations. Um, this, this clearly is not a granite thing. This almost looks like something you'd see up near Boston or something when you're taking the split to the 128 and 95. Um, one of the things that used to be right below the ledge is the um, the railroad station and the, and the train station there. They would put a train in, it would go in, and then they would turn it right around so they could drive back out again. 
and all back here, I keep losing my cursor here, all behind it is, is the, uh, the cliff. This is from one of the old Sanborn uh, fire maps, and you can see, why do I keep, oh, there we go. Um, this right here, the ledge, top of ledge, 25 feet above roundhouse, right over here. And so go over here. Now, I, I can remember, uh, was it Mr. Terrio from the Water Department complaining to me a number of years ago. Uh, he's talking about, oh, these people want to pull the Quickishan River out of the out of the ground, out of the pipes, and bring it out again. They don't even know which side of the road it's on. And, and I was like, uh, hey, Mr. Terrio, uh, I don't know which side of the road it's on. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so far away. I was born in the 60s. I mean, I, I don't even remember the, the old city hall down there. So this idea of figuring out where the falls were, what, you know, it's, it's difficult. Uh, believe it or not, this history book takes on some of that. And one of the things that the author describes, and I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Easton, he talks about how the falls come down and they come down to the eyeglasses. You see it? And of course, this is the 1812 map for Fall River. And so this is, um, this is a close-up in it, right? So here are the little eyeglasses. Um, West Central, uh, Central Street, West Central Street was laid out very early, and so we have that over here. And of course, what would probably go over here is the uh, Central Street Bridge. Right, that we still have, that granite bridge now. And here's Anawan Street. Look where the falls would be. Would they be exactly where these cliffs are now, the Metacomet Ledge? <coughs> About that. Look at this. It, it's, it's not just me, right? Doesn't that look like running water did a job on this? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Is that the West of it, a little bit more down the hill, behind the factories down there. Yeah. Um, as soon as I looked at that, I was like, oh my God, that, that really looks like water to me. And I wonder if I have the, oh, that, that's, I just had to put that in. This is high. I, I really risked my neck for this. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my wife about it, I show her the picture, she's like, ugh. Oh. You know, like, oh. she wouldn't even talk to me. She's like, you are so stupid. Um, I go back over here, and um, you see this here, the, di the different character of the rock here? So here is, is very jagged, but here it looks a lot more washed. Now, I, and I know they did a lot of work down here, and I'd be the first to say that you can't figure this stuff out sometimes. But, you know, that's pretty compelling over here. The, the Metacomet Ledge might have been part of that that water system might have been part of that waterfall. I don't know. Is that where, like, uh, where Woolworths was at the corner of North Main Street? And then I go there. Do you know where Wow is? Yes. Workout World, that, that factory? Yes. Right behind there. Okay. Right where the bridge comes out, you, you, get, you go behind it all. In fact, right. if you've never been back there, you'll see um, different where the Quickishan River still flows, some falls. Right and just go behind those buildings and up under the bridge area. You know? it, 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 there was some graffiti, but it didn't, it didn't seem unsafe. Um, I'm not telling anybody to do this, and I, I certainly don't want to be sued for it, but if you do ever decide to go back here, uh, wear good shoes and maybe a hiking stick, something to balance yourself. Very slick. Um, that worn stone was, was very kind of sandy <laughs> and um, slippery. Yes, question? My father was a laborer and worked on the Braga Bridge. Really? And he was, he actually uh, was one of the laborers that closed in, uh, closed off the water that comes out of that area. Really? As I was growing up, he, was, he would always tell us what he worked on and what he did. So you should be able to find out, I uh, find uh, probably some construction um, they must be something. And that, again, you know, I just keep going back to the historical society. That's why we have repositories. Um, we have the historical society. We have the Fall River Public Library, which actually keeps a, a good supply of materials on hand if you get to go in the Fall River room. Um, I had to cajole my way into there the other day. Um, they have a great s supply of history, but there are just very few repositories. And did you write all this stuff down? Oh, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down, record people. Write it down. 
and don't climb cliffs, you'll live longer. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh yeah, I, I hope this works. I was looking, I, I'm fascinated. Acros, granite, oh please, I hope this connects. It seems to be working. Oh, oh here we go. Please. There I am. Oh, right here. Hey, watch this. What, is it, what rock is that? Look like granite? Looks like granite, right? Watch this. Come on. Oh, these computers are terrible. Yeah, but don't enable. Go ahead. I'm, now I'm getting nervous. I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> <sighs> okay, um, so what my hand is actually doing here is, as I was looking at this, this looked like granite to me, and so I was, I was thinking about this, this sort of rotted granite, and um, so I was checking this out because it actually looked pretty clean, but as I went there, just, it, it, just, it all gave way under my hand, and it seemed like what was left was actually quartz crystals. Everything else was kind of breaking down, and the quartz was there. And, and, and so I'm like, oh, well, you know, have, I, have I figured out, have I given myself a, a biology, uh, geology lesson here? Anyway, I don't know if that'll come back, but let's go to the next one. All right, this, this has been, anybody here that's done history, anytime you research something, even if you've done like family history, You'll have months where you, you do all this work, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then you'll have this stretch where everything you put your eyes on turns to gold. To me, this Brady Farm was just that. Uh, Brady Farm was referenced in the third um, volume of the Phillips History. And so I've got a little, I put a little map thing here. I don't have any pictures of people from it. But this is what it says, and I, I won't read for you, but I'm sure you, can you read that? Can you see that well enough? I don't know where everybody comes from here. I'm a North End boy, you know. And so to actually find something to do in the South End, I used to think the South End was like another city, you know. <laughs> it was Fall River and then that place South End. Um, I'm like, well, great. I, I have a reason to go out. And it was several years ago that I went out. I said, well, okay, the Brady Farm is pretty clearly not there. There are no farms up there now. But I said, there's still... Cook Pond, there's still dirt, there's still yards. And so I started to walk through the neighborhoods up there, and, and this is the kind of guy I am. You know, it, it's probably good that I, I kind of look a little cream cheese in my presentation, because people didn't, really didn't call the cops on me as I'm walking by yards looking for <laughs> any white rocks in there. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> Went through the whole neighborhood, not a single white rock. Then, I wasn't even thinking about it, I went by a house on Mariano Bush Boulevard, and in front of the house is a big white rock, quartz, big, you know, this big, you know, like that. And so now, you know, and this is, this is where you can tell you really want to do some history. You only have one choice here. What do you have to do? You're gonna knock on the door. <laughs> You have to knock on the door. You got to get in there, and you know I don't look too threatening, but I, you know I am six two. I weigh about two forty, two probably two fifty. Don't tell my wife. Um, you know I didn't. I don't get the answer. Leave a card. That's it. But who's going to call you up when you say, "Please call me. I'm curious about your rock." <laughs> <laughs> didn't get the call. <laughs> Anyway, as I start preparing for this, yeah, I said, well, I'm going to go back by there again today. The Brady Farm is the mystery for me. I have to do this. 
And I go back and I finally, there's some young man working out there and he's related to the person that owns it. I'm not sure, I don't know where it comes from. And I'm like, take my card. I said, please, please, please get in touch with me. Can, and then I say, can I stop back? He's, oh sure, they'd love to talk to you about it. I stop back twice, nobody. I call, right? I get it, we're playing phone tag. I'm ready to quit. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm frustrated. So I said, well, that can't be the only rock. So now I start, I'm desperate. I've got to prove the Brady Farm. So I start hiking the land all around Cook Pond on the east side. And I'm going through the woods. And it's pretty, there's a lot of mosquitoes and things like that. The ticks weren't too bad. The mosquitoes were ferocious. And, um, you know, and I'm doing all this other work. You know, I, I check the deed. You know, here he is, right? And I, I'm sorry for putting these deeds in. But once I find them, I, I just love them. I want to, you know, I want to share it. Um, he bought the farm March 27, 1863. Um, it was on the way to Bear Den, Bears Den Road. Boy, that's going to be my next project. I've got to figure out what the heck that is. Were there any bears up there? Um, so, so here we have Tom Brady. He's my, my right? Thomas Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> you have to. You just have to, right? <laughs> so, find this. In fact, he bought a lot of land up there. And yeah, you know, I, I keep finding him on maps. Here he is again. Right, here's Brady. Here's Amity Street, Fish Road, a lot closer to the pond than you would expect. Um, Cook Pond, Laurel Lake, right? And now it's what Laurel Street over here. Okay, this is 1883. So it's still there, right? And, and you, play, you keep going. You keep trying to place them. Um, here's the rock. Here's the rock. So. I'm like, oh. And of course, my question about the rock is what? Did you, and I don't even know if people do this, did you buy it? Did you buy this rock and have it brought to the property? Or was it here? It's a fairly new house. I, 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 what, I, I'm not experienced in this. What do I do, right? So, but that was my thing. Did you buy it, right? But I can't talk to anybody. So, <sighs> overhead, so, come on, mouse, where are you? Here we are. So here's the site for where Brady's Farm would be. It was, it was like 2 Amity Street, and there's some new building here. And with this new building, there's always hope to find something, right? Um, yeah, nurse's home. And there's, of course, there's a new Henry Lord School. But if I listen to uh, Mr. Easton in the history book, he tells me this whole eastern part here was littered with quartz. Still not finding any. Um, this is the, the house where the lawn rock was. Pretty good, you know, it's there. Um, it's in my range here, right? I find a rock. I find a rock. I have walked everywhere. I can't even tell you how many hours and what painful walking. You know, of course, you know how you, you, when you're looking for rocks? <laughs> you know, you, you give the mosquitoes a good shot at the back of your neck. Um, I find, I find a rock. Now I come across it, and it's not, you know, not too big, right? I get a little leaf there to give you a little scale. So I'm like, oh, great, I'll get it. So I, I reach down, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I'm sorry, I know if I was a good archaeologist, I would have a plan and that, but I'm like, I'm taking this rock. Um, I can't get it up. I'm like, sorry, I'll come back with like a little you know, trowel or something. Is that what you call a trowel? I'll, I'll, I'll dig this thing out. I come back, I dig it out. The thing is huge. I, can't, I, I get it out, now I can't pick it up. <laughs> I have to have my son come in, and we lift it out on a, on a big tarp, and we carry it out. And you know when, like, when you first go into a mosquito area, and you, you, know, you just kind of cool and move it around, you're okay. But boy, lift some rocks in that, and you get hot. Man, those mosquitoes zoom right in on you. Anyway, uh, I'll show it to you. I brought it in just because I'm so proud of it. I mean, I'm not even sure. I know it's got some quartz in there. Uh, it looks like it's got a little granite sort of worked in there too. Um, but what's that? Yeah. 
No, 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 I was pretty careful with that. It was actually, um, I checked the land and the last deed I could find that it belonged to Montop, Montop Power Company. Are they even around? No. I'm safe then. They won't miss it. They won't miss it. I'm trying to get my son out to pick it up with me. He goes, how heavy is it? I'm like, I don't know, about 70 pounds. We got it home, I put him on the scale with it. It's 107 pounds. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> but, but, glacial quartz. Now I'm just, I'm like, I've made it. Like, this is my Brady Farm connection. I, I am, <laughs> I, I live for this stuff. I know it sounds kind of weird. I'm such a nerd, but I live for this stuff. And so I've made my connection. Like, this is real now. Um, I can believe it, you know, it's real that this, I, I've touched history somehow. And so we carry it out and we're driving home and I, and I tell my son John, I'm like, John, I'm like, let's go buy that house one more time. Let's go buy the house. And he's like, oh, dad, right? <laughs> oh, dad. Like, you know, didn't I I'm carry the stupid rock out with you, you know? <laughs> you know? He goes with me because he's a good kid. We go and we meet Louisa Pont. And she comes out and she's gracious. She answers the door. My son's six foot four, you know, and she just answers the door. Hi. I'm like, what are you doing answering the door with two big guys here? She goes, oh, she, I thought you were the guy for the rock. I'm like, well, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Do I, is it a look? Do I have a step? Is it a look? Do we, we develop a look as we you start doing this stuff? I <laughs> look like a rock. <laughs> yeah, a rock star, right? Anyway, um, hey, rocks are pretty boring things by themselves, so I, I did try to get a lot of pictures of people with rocks in that, so here she is with a rock. She was very gracious, and, but what made me excited is that she pretty much told me this. Her late boyfriend was a contractor, and she had bought the house, and he was working three houses down, digging out the foundation, and he digs up that rock. And immediately, he just recognizes it like, I love this rock. And he puts it in the backhoe, lifts the thing up, and drives down to her house and puts it right in the front yard. She said he spent a week scrubbing the rock to make it look good. Now, was it one of the rocks from the Brady Farm? I don't know. I don't know, perhaps. But what is it a testament to? It seems to me. When I was a kid, you know, I, I, I loved rock collecting, you know, but I wasn't very good at it. Um, I would collect quartz. You know how big the quartz was usually you'd find? About that big. A big one was about that big. To find two pieces like this on the east side of the pond where, and of course, Cook Pond was formed quite obviously by a glacier. Um, it seems to me like, I don't know, I made my connection. But so now, so now like I'm just, I'm happy as a clam, right? I, I, everything's coming together. Look at this. I find his obituary. Look at the story about this guy. Well-known citizen, age 67, came from County Longford, right? Worked for Oliver Chase, right? He went to California and accumulated quite a fortune. He was on the tail end of the gold rush. The guy went there, made a fortune, came back, and bought the farm. That sounds terrible. <laughs> bought the farm, $3,000. I'm pretty sure that one of the deeds, because he bought a bunch of different properties, I'm pretty sure one of them said, paid to me in gold. And I couldn't find it. You ever look through a registry of deeds and, and oh my God, just page after page. You forget what you're looking at. I take all these pictures, but. Like, oh my God, what a great story. This guy comes back, the old Irish country boy, comes here, makes it big, works hard, makes it big, goes to California, gets the gold, comes back. Look at that. And then, too, I knew I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to, I had to find his grave. A little confusion there. He had, a, he had a son that died a couple of years from him. Um, but down at St. John's Cemetery, which was kind of cool because I'd never really done any research down there. Um, fun place. A couple of his kids are buried beside him. Um, no, no, St. John's is in Fall River. You have the North Burial Ground. 
And right across Brightman Street to the uh, north is another burial ground right there. Yep, that one's run by um, the Catholic Church. So if you want records from there, you have to go to St. Patrick's Cemetery. St. Patrick's Cemetery. Even the woman there was interested. I was showing her the paperwork. She said, oh, what a good story. <laughs> I thought she was going to come down and help me look for the grave. This was another lock gate, too. She says, oh, the cemetery closes at four. The wall's about four feet high. I'm like, don't, please don't tell anybody. I trespassed. It was for a good purpose, though, right? They're <laughs> dying to get in. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm talking a lot. Um, I do have a, like a lot of rocks I would go through. If, if any point somebody tells me, just, just put up like time, yield, you're talking too much, let me know. Um, Channel Rock, this was, um, anybody have any questions? I'm sorry, questions? Uh, Channel Rock, technically not a Fall River Rock, um, but it's such a great story to it that I, I, just, I just had to go with it. Um, Channel Rock was, Linny French, Linwood French, uh, he's, he's no longer with us, told me, I called him up for information about another monument in Freetown. And I said, Linny, do you know where the, the, the Bullock murder uh, site is? And I call him up out of nowhere, right on the phone he says, go to 120 Bullock Road, you'll find the monument on the left next to the rose bush. It was something ridiculous like that. It, it, it was like, I'm like, Lenny, did you have your notes open in front of you? He's like, ah, oh, who needs notes, kind of thing. Okay, you know. So he says, well, you're looking at rocks, he said, and this was like 2007, 2006. He said, yeah, you ever hear the story of Channel Rock? Channel Rock. I'm like, no, no, I haven't. Yeah, Freetown, the Freetown floor of a connection. We all know it, right, that we were part of Freetown. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. So the story is that Channel Rock, oops. Right here. Let me take a drink. You can read that a little bit. Isn't that amazing? When you think of Yankee doggedness, determination, this is just amazing. All right, we got this big rock. What are we going to do? Like, we'll, oh, we'll wait for the tide. We'll bring in these barges, strap a piece of timber to it. The tide will come in. It'll lift the rock, and we'll pull it out of the channel. That is ingenious. It seems like the kind of idea that I would come up with, and it would just fail miserably. You know, the barge would sink. I'd have to pay for it. Um, but anyway, I was like, that's an amazing story. And then if you go back, Winnie's in front of it. Winnie's like, and here it is, the Channel Rock. I'm like, damn. I'm like, you know, of course, now I'm like, look at the size of that thing. And he said, oh, it took, you know, 100, 100, a team of 100 horses to pull it in. And that I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's someone that had 100 horses at that time, but we'll see, right? But anyway, it was such a compelling story. He was such a good reporter with the other thing that I just ran with it. Uh-oh. History lesson number two. Do I get this from Ronnie Reagan? Trust, then verify. Okay, here's an old map. Here's a rock. Come on. This is the rock we took a picture in front of. Number 49, drum roll, please. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Welcomes Rock. Now, Linwood French had forgotten more than I would ever know <laughs> about history. Um, maybe this rock was pulled out too, but as soon as I looked at it, I'm like, that's a big rock. <laughs> if we look at Channel Rock, we go for 52, and we see that it is on the opposite shore, and right next to it is that thing called the gullies, the gullies. And so I said, hmm, okay. And so for this time around, I said, well, I'm not going to make this mistake again. Um, again, I had lost uh, Linwood's picture. I had a beautiful picture of him. And I don't care if the rock was right or wrong. I had a great picture of a now no longer with us historian that is lost. I, only had to, I, I was able to get a scan from the newspaper article that I had kept. Um, so hmm, lesson learned again, print out your pictures. 
So I said, well, I've got to, I've got to find my way to, to this. And um, as, you know, as you take a look at it, here's, um, here's where the rock was that I took the picture with. And here is probably where, well, I know it's where, um, Channel Rock is. Um, great, look at this. That's the channel. That's the channel. This is just, and this is from Google on my phone. If I do it on my computer, it doesn't look as good. Um, you can see things over here. They used to bring ships in here, and they would pull them up here, and the tide would go down. They would work on them, and when the tide would come back up, they would pop them back out in the water and let them get out of there. Um, but anyway, so we had Channel Rock over here, and so they pulled it out of the channel near the gullies, and so over here. And so I was, um, I was trying to, here's that, that monstrosity again. Uh, and this is the one that I wanted. And so I went to see, and of course, this, it now is what time? Door knocking time. <laughs> Gonna knock on some doors again. So I go on this little lane that I know is on this side of the, uh, the proper side of the river at this point. And um, I knock on this door and I was talking with um, Don Flanders and his beautiful wife, Barbara. And they have a beautiful home, a 1750, um, yeah, I guess a, a federal style home. And uh, they, they showed me around in that. And then Don says, oh, I'll show you how to get to that rock. He takes me out. Of course, he's out there. I think, I think he said he was 84. And he, he takes off like a billy goat going through the woods. <laughs> it's Father's Day. I'm dressed for a cookout. I have good slacks on. And this doesn't bother him a bit. <laughs> he's like, here we go out. And I am just covered. And, um, and we, fi we finally get it. He turns back because it was a real rickety kind of bridge. But I'm already filthy at this point. I'm not going out. So um, I'm undaunted. So I actually get there. And I follow it down, and down, 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 down. And there it is. It was so muddy. I had already ruined my shoes, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to walk out there. I've, but like, it got to the point where I was afraid I was going to lose my shoe, and I'd have to walk back through you know, all sorts of briar and that stuff with no shoe on. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty darn big rock. I had nothing to give it perspective, but probably about uh, 12 to 13 feet long. You know, it's, it's a big rock. But it's also something that could be lifted and moved, I think. Um, but yeah, just, just amazing. Again, too, just an amazing guy. Um, what a nice, nice guy. They, and of course, they let me take their picture. I said, you know, who wants to just look at rocks? Let's have some nice people in here. <laughs> so they let me take their picture. It's so nice. And Barbara's sick. She's not feeling well, too. So um, yeah, so, so, so nice. But yeah, this is the legendary Channel Rock. Um, Don went on to explain that the gullies were a place where they used to take clay from. He said he played there as a kid. Uh, they used to take clay out of there. And so he said they were probably bringing boats in, trying to get clay out. And of course, clay is heavy stuff. And it's probably weighing the boats down. And they were coming across this rock. And so they pulled it out. And they were able to get all the clay out of the, clay out of the gullies. Cleft rock. Any questions on that? No, I'm sorry. Um, cleft rock. Familiar? No. no? Anybody know where it is? No. <laughs> Same place as Fighting Rock. <laughs> it's, not, it's not anywhere. This is where it should be, but it's where it's probably not. Maybe somewhere underground. But. Um, cleft rock, I've been looking at it. <sighs> I've looked at it for years. I've been looking at it closely for the past month. I still find it kind of um, confusing. Uh, large outcrop. Um, I can remember hearing the stories about the cleft rock was close to the Quickishan River, and that was where lovesick Native American women would throw themselves off, pining away for their brave warriors who apparently wouldn't take them out for dinner or something. Maybe venison, I'm not sure. Um, so I'd heard about that. But I'm like, where is this rock? And of course, downtown has changed so dramatically. But as with everything, there's got to be, there's got to be something, right? Um, so I, I look. This is an old map from the Phillips history showing um, the Pocasset Purchase. The Pocasset Purchase was, I guess, the second big purchase of land creating Fall River, the first being the Freeman's Purchase, and the second, um, Pocasset. And we see Cook's Pond up here. And this is um, the Quickshan River. And we see the cleft rock right up there. Cleft rock, and it's close to the river. Okay, you don't get a very good idea what it's about, though, right? Um, another. This was from 
42, I forget. This too is in the history book. What a great history book. Um, Bedford Street, West Central Street, and you have Clef Rock over here and Flat Rock over here. But most historians would tell you what? Same rock. Same rock. That the rock was one continuation. It was under the road. It was everywhere around here, which makes a lot of sense if you know anything about the, you know, the what is the term? The basilith, basilith in, uh, in Fall River. Um, but again, as people are working in the city, trying to take over downtown, what do they start doing? They start cutting down the rock. They cut it down, they cut it down. Uh, they build on uh, Stone Lane. Stone Lane, go figure. Uh, they've cut down the rock. They build stone houses for mill workers down there. Um, the rock gets lower and lower and lower and lower. Traffic is able to open more. Um, but this big defining piece of who we are that actually laid out our whole territory is gone. Um, the history, the guy writing history for the book, and I think in this case it was Easton, it wasn't Phillips so much, um, he said that he took a couple of pictures of the Clef Rock after the 28th fire and that it was probably the last view that you would ever get of this because they were taking it down even more at that point. The Clef Rock would be right at that same corner, probably partly under the, um, it used to be that old bank building over there now. Uh, some of it would be in the basement, kitty corner across in the bank over there. Um, but 1928 fire, and he said he took a couple of pictures. And so again, this is where, go to your local historical society and say, hey, do you have any pictures of the fire of 28? Because if I ask for pictures of Clef Rock, I'm probably not going to get too much of anything. So fire of 28. Um, Dennis, how big was the file you guys brought out? About this. <laughs> Big, thick file. I'm like, okay, here we go. And, uh, but I was actually pretty lucky within the first couple of minutes, I came across, not this picture, although this is a good one, here's the fire. Um, the whole downtown, are you familiar with this fire? We, we lost like the whole of central downtown. Truly, truly devastating. You can still Citizen Savings Bank, right? Um, here's another picture of the damage. This almost kind of shows it, but here, Right there, still not so good. But of course, what I come across at the Historical Society? If this is not the exact same photo that Norman Easton was talking about, I'll, I'll leave my hat. Um, we see, is, is this a rock or is this, this is bedrock, right, this is, this is ledge, I, I don't know, they call it a rock, maybe, I don't know. They, they knew the difference between boulders and rocks, that's obvious, um, but we see it here. And a little bit closer, they're already pretty good at breaking this stuff up. And one other picture, looking northeast towards Main Street, you see the, come on, mouse, here we are. You see the bank back there? Right, you see the direction we're looking at? There's so some more of it right here. Clef Rock. Just to keep expecting to see the bones of some <coughs> dead Indian maiden who had thrown herself <laughs> off. You know, <laughs> watch out, <laughs> an archaeological dig. A little closer. But that was, yeah, I just, I was just amazing. Like, you know, you, you look, a lot of times these things are just lost. And this is why we have a central repository to have things like this. And that's why we have to support it. Uh, a word about this, I found this picture online from some unnamed blog and I knew immediately what it was. Now, Clef Rock, if it was anywhere, right, it was going to be over here, but about that. Look at this over here. Hold on. Look at this guy here. So, okay, let's say, let's be ambitious, let's say he's about six feet tall. No, he's Italian, he's probably 5'5". Five five. <laughs> so we just stack him under here. Is the dirt really about five feet deep here before we hit what? Bedrock. Bedrock. Solid bedrock. So, I, I love the story of Clef Rock. I, you know, I, I love that they found it and they had a name for it. Um, but the truth be told, <laughs> Fall River is just built on this stuff. Just built on it. Um, if you're ever looking for where the Quickishan River is, there it is right there. They must have some sort of camera thing they can go right through that now and take a look at it, right? 
the academy building. Is that the academy right there? Yeah. Isn't that great? That steam shuttle too? My word. Hog Rock? Hog Rock? Michelle, was it you that was talking about Hog Rock online? Somebody was saying, where the hell is rock, Hog Rock, they were saying. Maybe, they, yeah, they were like, how the heck do you find that anyway? Uh, I was talking about rock. Yeah, well, yeah. No, I just thought it was, it was another discussion. But um, Hog Rock. I had found these years ago, when I, I, I think I walked out there the whole way, um, which really is a testament to me being a, probably about 40 pounds lighter. Um, East Line Trail near Break Ridge Trail. Now, of course, this probably means nothing to you. Um, it's... Um, off a of Yellow Hill Road, out that way near the Copacut Fire Tower. So, um, so this is from the uh, Phillips History Hog Rock, the Hog Rocks, three of them. Um, and you can see a level stretch of woodland about a mile north of the Copacut Fire Tower. Now, they're easy to find. I begin to I've begun to think that people can no longer read a topographic map. Um, anybody? Boy Scouts? Boy Scouts in here? No Boy Scouts? Shameful. Mr. Kitchen, you weren't a Boy Scout? No. Oh, it's just, oh my word. Topographic maps. Where's our level stretch here, right? How can we tell a level stretch? Well, here's the Copa Cut fire. Oops, let's go back. Here's Copa Cut, and we're going, this is north, right? You see some level ground over here? See it here? See the contour mark? See how that's all one contour? That's our level place over here. And sure than heck, the rock is over here and over here, kind of straddling the trail. Of course, too, to make sure, I brought Mike Labasia with me, the reservation superintendent, who actually knows where things are out there. In case I get hopefully, hopelessly lost, he could help me out. <clears throat> uh, so this, this idea of hog, you know, hog rock, because it looked like a rock. Uh, it looked like a hog, I should say. It was a rock. It didn't look like it. Um, uh, I, was, I was lucky enough to find uh, the deed. I was looking for the deed because uh, why hog rock? Was it just the look or, or did they actually raise hogs out there? Was this farmland? I, I don't know. And so I, I, find, I find the deed where they turned it over to the city and it, it, it known as the hog rock lot. Um, but then interestingly, and, and Mike Labossier had reinforced this, the above name granted hereby expressly reserved myself, heirs, and assigns the right to cut and remove trees and wood from the premises. All wood lots out there. They, you know, they, they wanted wood. Go out there to visit the rock. This is looking north. On the right is a smaller part of it. On the left, the two bigger parts. Right there. I made Mike stand in front of it. <laughs> it's a big rock. Mike Labossier is fearless. I don't know if you've ever met him. Um, you know, I, I said, Mike, I need to take a picture of the rock. He's, oh, I'll bring the chainsaw out. We'll do this. And like, you know, if I use a chainsaw, I'd be out of about 10 minutes warming up, you know, trying to figure out how to do it. He just comes in, puts on some breeches, and cuts down a little tree. Just, just gets it done. And then, to add insult to injury, I've already felt emasculated. Then he scampers up. He says, I've never climbed this rock. We've got to climb it. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so I've got to follow him up there. He climbs like a billy goat. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> I'm like, please, Mike. <laughs> we, <laughs> we actually climbed up the back part. Um, it's pretty high. <laughs> pretty high. Uh, funny, we're up there. We hear voices. People are actually hiking out there. It's a good sign. Um, so, you know, the legendary hot rocks, just some big rocks out there. And of course, they were true landmarks. They marked the land so people could figure out where the heck they were. Uh, the fire lane goes by it, but that was put in later. There was a little tra trail that used to go by it so people could orient themselves in the woods. If you notice, it's, it's on an elevation. It's maybe only about 20 feet less uh, in height than the Copacan Fire Tower, uh, the peak of that hill. So, um, they're pretty high. And you get on top of them, and I think I had a copy of the photo, but... I didn't do it. Um, you can see pretty far to the um, west. Um, and then I noticed this, and of course, yeah, it's like it's kind of bittersweet. Oh, we lose one and we gain another. So now we lose uh, profile rock, or here as um, 
the historians called it Old Man of Joshua Mountain, and, and it fell off, and this isn't surprising. It went the same way as the Man of the Mountain in New Hampshire. Um, I, I was going to try to present on it, but what's it to say? Um, there's a debate about you know, whether it was um, a Native American thing. Uh, Linwood French told me, he said, nobody knew about that rock until the railroad came through. He said that's the only time people really got, it was cleared out enough that you could see the profile on it. Um, and then it was a discussion online with his, his son and some Native American woman came in and insisted that it was Native American, so it could be. I, I, don't, I haven't talked to any Native Americans about it. Um, but one thing that always uh, I, I was kind of curious about, and I was thinking about doing it, there are some chisel etchings on top of somebody's name up there, and, and I forget who it was. I used to see it with my kids, and I was going to go up and research that, but then it came down and they wouldn't let people in. Um, and then I said, well, now we don't have to worry about it. So we had Profile Rock, and I, and I think I want to call this one Hitchcock Rock. <laughs> Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock, you, you seeing it? You, you feeling it? Yeah, you that or the guy from the New Yorker, that little snooty kind of janitor, right? My wife thinks I'm crazy. I'm like, no, you can see the little mouth. Where's my thing? Here's the mouth, the nose, little nostril. I see a little eye action there. Say no more. Say no more. If anybody asks, Hitchcock Rock. <laughs> do you want me to go? You want me to do it? I, I don't know if I want to. Um, you know, uh, Stephanie is definitely going to get into the whole Bullock murder um, and that. And, but I, I did want to touch on it. One, because I, I was afraid that um, uh, one of Linwood French's sons was going to be here and, and hear me say that his father kind of messed up on an identification of a rock. And then I was going to say, but he really nailed this one. He really told me where the Bullock marker was. Um, but that being said, too, I, I understood that the mother of uh, one of the um, kids that I used to recreate the crime scene photo is going to be here, and so, um, but she's not. I'm going to go through it anyway. So, um, murder site of John Bullock, June 1862. Uh, John Bullock, a merchant from New Bedford, is delivering um, booze, wine to a, a, like a parlor kind of uh, bar room, and uh, this young kid, Obed Reynolds, wanting to, he's, he's married, he can't live with the girl that he married because he has no money, he wants to get some money, and he waits and ambushes this guy and shoots him. And you can see it here, he, he had a shotgun that was, um, a, you know, sawed off shotgun. Uh, it didn't work, it blinded the guy. The guy that was a, they had a fall, he stabbed him to death. Responders who came to the see, scene, they were all like fresh, you know, like, you know, they said this looked like a war scene, this didn't look like a murder scene. Um, so anyway, um, members of the Bullock family came and put this piece of granite up there. And it, there's no marking on it, there's no nothing, it's just this, and we look back, it's like this tortured piece of granite. There's something, there's something tortured about it. It's clearly, this wouldn't be the site of, uh, you know, where Mother Goose said her first nursery rhyme or something like that. There's, there's just something not that about it. Um, people used to paint the rock every year. They used to throw red paint on it, and some people started to call it blood rock for a while. Um, less so. And in fact, most people don't know what the heck is going on. I'll let Steph talk about the whole murder, but um, when I went out there, I was curious what neighbors knew about the monument near their house, and um, a, a little scary. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, the reenactors, um, Mark Messier, a young guy, he was up for it. Uh, Dave Jennings uh, from the Lafayette House, and the, um, he does stuff with uh, Oak Grove Cemetery. He's a Civil War reenactor, he gave us uh, the soda shotgun, shouldn't have too many of them in the state, and some of the clothes. And the ambush, and I get to play Bullock. <laughs> ah, don't shoot! I had my son, uh, Evan, make these pictures look old, and uh, he, was, he was just all over me about this. It's like, just shut up. Just fix it. <laughs> you know, I funny, I just noticed an anachronism. Not an anachronism here. He's not cocked. <laughs> He's not cocked. What a bad reenactor. <laughs> uh, I went around to neighbors, all within 50 yards of the monument. Hey, what do you know about the rock? I don't want to use the names, because <laughs> J.M. A murder of a panhandler. That there was a panhandler in town and somehow he got murdered. Close. Murder. 
Um, somebody else, I just know it's called Blood Rock. Very good. <laughs> you win 20 points. <laughs> AL wanted to take the stone. The guy confessed. He's like, yeah, I was going to drag it into my driveway. Because <laughs> it's kind of long. And the last one, wanted to carve with his name and address. He was actually, they were, they were contemplating this when I went by. They were going to pull down this marker that had been you know, there for 120 years. And <laughs> it's going to become a, a, a marker in somebody's you know, driveway. Tragic. Tragic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know, thank you all so much. And I really, it's, it's so nice to have people come out. And I, I'm sorry if I went on a bit too long. I, I labor over this stuff. You're talking about rocks. You know, there's a real chance of just failure. You know, just like rock, another rock, another rock, you know. Um, thank, you, thank you for listening. Any, any questions? Any, you know? Um, I, I, I keep talking to people about, like, do history. Like, if you're interested in it, you know, you're telling me a story about your dad. You know, if you're getting stories like this, record it. R record it. Don't, don't, don't wait. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Don't depend on your memory. Write it down. Even if you just do a note to yourself. Um, archaeology now, it's like, did you see that they're starting to um, investigate Woodstock? Where they had the concert? Archaeologists are looking at Woodstock. It's like, you know, history starts now. So, you know, do it. But anyway, thank you all for coming. And if you can um, give to the historical society, do it, please. <laughs>